All right, what's going on guys? It's Epoxy, and here in this video, we'll be breaking down and analyzing everything we saw in the Cyberpunk 2077 PlayStation gameplay, which includes gameplay on both the PS4 Pro and the PlayStation 5. We'll also be comparing the PlayStation gameplay to PC gameplay at the end of this video to analyze the graphical differences. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Now, I do want to note that we knew that this gameplay was going to be released thanks to a statement from CD Projekt Red following the release of the Xbox gameplay, but it seems to have dropped early and without the announcement they said they were going to give as a quick response to the leaked PlayStation footage that had caused quite a stir in the community, which was thanks to the game lacking the Day Zero patch, meaning bugs and graphical issues that are already patched in the game, but the patch hasn't been pushed out to the retail version yet, so that was a part of the leaked gameplay. In fact, CD Projekt Red even showed off the beginning of the game following the Nomad Life Path, the same gameplay and life path that was shown in the leak. So it seems to have definitely been a direct response. It was also noted that any bugs that you may see in this footage are still being actively worked on and that the PlayStation 5 gameplay is just done through backwards compatibility, just like the Xbox Series X gameplay. So there is no graphical quality difference on the new consoles at launch. CD Projekt Red have stated many times in the past that a full-blown free next-gen upgrade will be making its way to more capable hardware platforms sometime in 2021. What you'll most likely be seeing until then is just more stable performance and maybe a higher resolution, but for now, all of this gameplay is in 1080p. The gameplay begins with the PlayStation 4 Pro in the character creation menu, where we can see the options for different presets, including what seems to be a randomized option, as well as options for voice tone, skin tone, skin type, hairstyle, in which we actually got to see four different styles, hair color, which we got to see three different presets, and lastly, eyes. Now just keep in mind that there are many more options than that, those are just the ones that we got to see in this clip. Jumping into actual gameplay, we see the PlayStation 4 Pro is rendering the open world of Night City just fine. Slowly driving the same quadra seen in the Xbox gameplay, which seems very much like a Dukes of Hazard Easter egg. We've also seen this exact same car in a screenshot released alongside the Rides of the Dark Future trailer, which listed it as a Quadra Type 77. In this clip, we can spot that V is headed to meet with Elizabeth Perales. Potentially in relation to Perales, one of the guys seen running for Night City Mayor in 2077. We also see a number of noteworthy vehicles, locations, and advertisements along our ride in this scene. We can spot the Villefort Alvarado, Mahir Motor Supron, Archer Hella, and I should also point out what seems to be a bug with the digital billboards during this scene. I honestly have no idea if this is an intentional glitch effect or if it's a graphical bug, but you'll see some more oddities that make it look more like a bug later on in this clip. In fact, further down the road, not only do the billboards look like they're dealing with Z fighting, which is a common bug in games where multiple textures are fighting each other to be shown, but we can also see that one of the billboards seems to be displaying an incorrect aspect set entirely. I could be wrong, but this does look to be some form of bug, but I'm certain it will be fixed before launch. Now here we can spot the Quattro Turbo, the Chevalon Thrax, Villefort Van, a fast travel station, and the Thornton Colby. But the most interesting thing here is the Weldon Holt signs, another candidate running for Night City Mayor in 2077, which are on top of a fence with caution signs suggesting it could be a restricted area. Further down the road, we see a Foodscape and Cabayan Foods location. We also get to see some more buggy billboards. We then get a look at the beginning of the Nomad Life Path, still on the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is the gameplay we'll be able to compare to the PC later in this video. One big thing to note here in this scene is that we can tell that the nudity is actually toggled off in this playthrough as the poster on the wall has been censored. Whether that is from the nudity toggle that we know will be included in the game, or if it's PlayStation wide and being censored by Sony, we'll have to wait and see. But the nudity toggle is a known feature that has been previously confirmed and we'll actually discuss that more in depth in a nether bonus video sometime soon. The final thing to note in this scene is that the car has now the addition of a dog bobblehead that wasn't there in the previous gameplay, but it's unclear as to whether this was added to the car itself or if they've added some minor customization options. But I would suggest not getting your hopes up for that one as it's likely just a small little detail added to give this specific vehicle more personality. We then get our first look at gameplay driving the Nomad version of the Thornton Galena to the border, well in dialogue with Jackie in the passenger seat, which I'll play out so you can hear the dialogue and see the bobblehead in action for yourself. Do you have the manifest from the transport? Of course I do. But the fixer didn't give you the job deeds? He... he did. I was just making sure. Listen, friend, we're both professionals, ain't we? Hey, you, uh... 
sure you've moved contraband before. Why, are you nervous? Me? <laughs> ah, por favor. One cool thing to note during that dialogue is the highlighted text when words aren't translated, which we saw in this clip when Jackie switched to speaking in Spanish. Arriving at the border, V is then forced to go into the border security building, specifically Immigration and Customs Inspection, where we can spot two SoCal Border Patrol officers with one of the unknown rifles. We can also spot that Militech is headed through the fast track lane at the border. Upon entering the building, V is then instructed to deposit their weapons at the front desk, where we can see V handing over the DARA Polytechnic revolver shot, and at the front desk, we can see an interesting weapons chart that shows multiple weapon silhouettes, some of which we can recognize, others we cannot. We can spot numerous pistols, SMGs, shotguns, rifles, sniper rifles, heavy machine guns, grenade launchers, and even rocket launchers. So let's just say there are many weapons we have yet to see. Now, if we roll back the footage a bit, we can actually see that there are a total of six columns and eight rows. So there are 48 weapons on this chart alone, which I'm certain doesn't even include all the weapons we know about. After handing over the weapons, V is instructed to head to room number two. So turning around, we get a closer look at the rifle being used by the Border Patrol. This small touch of a broken screen behind him, a map of the new United States of America with Night City highlighted, some NPCs doing random actions in front of it, and while we pass the NPC leaning against the wall, we get a prompt to talk to the NPC. So you can indeed interact with some of the random NPCs around the world space, but we already knew that. Headed into room two, we're greeted by the border guard that we've seen in past gameplay footage. But this time, we get a bit of a tease with the dialogue. Please sit. Papers. Is this routine? It might be. We'll see. Hmm. What are you transporting? It's all in there. It then jumps to footage of V and Jackie in Night City, with Jackie now in the driver's seat and on a new quest titled The Rescue, in which we're tasked to ride back with Jackie. During the ride, Jackie is talking about how Night City isn't just like any other city, it's a city where legends are born, like Morgan Blackhand, Andrew Wayland, and Adam Smasher. We can spot a sign for DTR, which is a corporation involved in freight shipping, which you'll see labeled on the massive AVs that fly over Night City and the Badlands, and we can also spot a fast travel station, a Thornton Colby, and a sign for ATAK. It then transitions to our first look at Cyberpunk 2077 running on the PlayStation 5, thanks to backwards compatibility. This is during the same quest, and we get to see V and Jackie entering Little China for the first time. Greeted by a situation stirred up by some gangers hijacking a car in the middle of an intersection on Ellison Street. Unfortunately for the gangers, Max Tack flies in to deal with the situation, and they're not exactly someone you want coming to deal with you. They're a high-tech specialized subgroup established to deal with rampaging cyber psychos suffering from advanced cyber psychosis and other major lawbreakers, including V if you commit enough bad crime. Based on this scene of them swiftly flying in, jumping out of the AV with their rocket boots, and eliminating the gangers in an execution-styled manner, aiming the gun just like we saw in the original teaser trailer, I'm not sure I want to be on their bad side. Jackie of course puts it best though, so here's the rock clip. Man, check it out V. Shit's going down. Let's get the hit! Fucking shoot! You look like your average bust. This ain't your average badges. That's Max Tack. NCPD's Apex Predators. MTAC rolls in when things fly out of hand. Gunk's out there, though. Just a midday snack for him. Well, show's over. Poor bastards. But they had it coming. Back onto the Nomad quest line, we get a short clip of some dialogue with Jackie. What's the deal with these borderlies flipping us the finger as they fucking please? With no consequences! He took a risk. He assumed we didn't have a clan backing us. And he was right. <sighs> so what now? We've crossed the border. Now you pay me, 
and we go our separate ways. And to end off the gameplay, we get some vehicle combat of fighting off these scavengers, tailing V and Jackie in the Villefort van. We can spot the no entry signs in the background, a 24-7 store, a Fuyatsuki location, and the more prominent things to point out here is the Constitutional Arms Unity pistol being used in the gameplay. The scavengers in the van are wearing the digital masks, so this is a solid confirmation that the crew that people thought were the bozos are indeed just scavengers, like I had said in one of my past trailer analysis videos. We also got a bit of the taunting chatter from the scavs with subtitles over their heads, an example of all these streets being named, with this one in particular being Crescent Street, live translation from the translator implant reflecting in the subtitles, and the player whiffing like I do in CSGO. Now, I said we would do a little bit of a comparison between PlayStation and PC gameplay, so let's do just that. I want to make it very clear, I think that the game looks just fine on console, and comparing it to PC isn't exactly fair. We're more just doing this to see the range of graphics available for the game, so don't let this comparison ruin it for you, and don't take me pointing out the differences as me shitting on console. That's not what I'm doing. So let's begin with the clip of looking down at the badge that V rips off of the leather vest, as this gives us a close look at the loss of some details. The immediately noticeable differences are the resolution of the game, which is the difference between 1080p and 4K, the texture quality, which we can see takes a noticeable dip on all objects, but is most noticeable on objects closer to the player's view, such as the badge V is holding as well as V's hand itself. Reflections are much more flat on the PlayStation, giving the sink faucet a very flat plastic look, just as an example. There is a significant difference in lighting, such as the way the scene is lit overall, drop in shadow quality, and features such as subsurface for scattering on the skin and ambient occlusion looking to be entirely absent on the PlayStation version. And another big thing to note is a significant drop in mesh quality. This is most prominent on smaller world details, such as the piping on the wall that we can see in the back right, which we can see is very detailed on the PC version, but drops down to a very low poly count version on the PlayStation. Turning around, this is where the loss in detail becomes more evident with the resolution, texture detail, and lighting quality. We can see reflections on certain objects are almost entirely gone, such as the metallic cupboards in the back. Mesh detail also sees a loss in quality, for example, the metal grating on the ground being replaced entirely with more concrete, and getting close to the mechanic, we see the loss in mesh and texture quality on even clothing, with the buttons and stitching details being flattened or removed entirely. Looking into the engine of the car, we can see that they've actually made some tweaks to the textures, but I'm going to assume that these were just design changes, so comparison here more comes down to mesh and lighting quality. Climbing into the vehicle is where things get interesting, as we see some of the downfalls of the lighting method on consoles, with the shadows not being present where they should be in the car's interior. We can see just how much the lack of reflections affects the scene overall, with everything metal looking more like plastic. For an example, this is most noticeable on the hood of the car. After the hood is closed, we can see another example of lower mesh quality and some objects being outright removed from the scene to boost performance, such as the missing tools and note on the pegboard. Again, all of this doesn't really affect general gameplay. All you're missing out on here is eye candy. And to be honest, in my opinion, the console versions of the game look just fine. This game has to render a lot on screen, and it's looking quite impressive on console with that in mind. So that is it for the PlayStation gameplay, but I will be releasing all my analysis videos for previous trailers and gameplay over the coming days, so keep a lookout for those. All of those include a lot more than this gameplay did, so there is going to be an overwhelming amount of information. But that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe to the fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay updated in all of my future videos. It'd be super. Greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.